Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel and my name is Dr. Monu Mijra. And guys, as per your request and a lot of questions on that, I have finally made a video on PhD from Canada. I know Canada is a land of opportunities and a lot of people from you want to go there and do their PhD. So in this video, we'll be talking about PhD from Canada. I have, you know, successfully convinced Ms. Amik Sidhu who is doing her PhD from University of Western Ontario, Canada to come forward and share the informative as well as a lot of details with you so that you can learn from her experience and apply to the Canada. So rest over, let's go to the video for this part and I will request you to please subscribe the channel and hit the like button if you really like the video and also you can follow me on various social media platforms. So let's go to the video and have information about PhD from Canada. Hi Amik, how are you? I'm good, how are you? So as per the latest demand, I'm here with Amik Sidhu, who is doing her PhD from the University of Western Ontario. So rather than me introducing her, she will introduce you to the audience. Can you please introduce yourself, Amik? Um, hello everyone, my name is Amik Sidhu and I'm doing my PhD in astronomy from University of Western Ontario, Canada. Um, I'm in my last year of PhD and so currently looking for postdoc positions. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you. So let's start the question answer round. So for the first question is, I know, but uh, why did you choose Canada for your PhD? Okay, so I did my master's in physics from Punjab University. Um, and there I was, uh, in my last year of master's, I did a special project in astronomy. And that's where uh, my interest began in that field. And I wanted to pursue a career in astronomy. Uh, but I felt that in India, there are not many opportunities for me um, in astronomy. So that's why I wanted to move to um, another country. Um, and out of those countries, I felt Canada was a better choice because uh, one, it's a beautiful country. It's a very peaceful country. People are very welcoming here. And I, have, and, and I definitely heard uh, about that uh, from other people. My brother lives in Canada, so I definitely knew of that too. And secondly, there are many um, astronomy positions in Canada. So that's why I picked Canada for PhD. Uh, now, coming to the next question is, how does your application process started? First of all, how did you find about this position and how did it all started? From email, did you write email to the professor or just complete the official formalities? So, uh, the way I did was I applied to five universities. But um, how I started was that I started looking at the uh, websites of the universities and uh, looked at what professors are doing there, uh, if there is something um, I'm interested in. I wrote emails to a couple of professors. Um, I also looked at their application processes so that I know in advance that what I should ha I need to have before I start my application process. Uh, so uh, I looked at almost every university in Canada, but then out of those, I selected just the five universities where I wanted to apply to. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so out of those universities, so the, uh, in the University of Western Ontario, I did not email anyone before. Um, I, I did email to a couple of uh, people in other universities, but not here. I mean, here their website really says that you do not really have to email the uh, professor. You can just fill the application process and then uh, they will uh, connect you to the professor uh, that you uh, that, that fits you. But yes, I did write emails, um, looked at the, I did my research uh, very well before I really started the formal process of the application. So what were the documents required by filling the application? So the documents are that uh, you need to have a, a CV, you mm -hmm. need to write a statement of purpose. Then there is an application that you fill for you have to pull, put all your details in. Um, the original mark sheets are not really supposed, and uh, so you have to put the uh, submit the scanned version of your all the mark sheets. If you are accepted, then they ask for the official transcripts, and then that official transcripts you have to get to the uh, uh, get mailed them to the university where you are going to uh, join. But then for the application purposes, you do not need the official transcripts. 
Um, other than that, um, you also need a English test that you have taken. So you need to provide a document for that and a document for um, a GRE. So I would really like to say one thing that GRE is not required in Canada. It is not um, a requirement, but almost every uh, university says that it is not a requirement, but it, it is definitely an asset if you have that. Okay. So if you are applying to Canada, better ready with the GRE so that you can get advantage over other countries. Yes, yes, yes. So, okay, now coming to the next part is English language test. What are the English language tests which are accepted? And what is the score, relatively good score for the application? Uh, so English language tests that are accepted are IELTS and TOEFL, um, as far as I know. Um, uh, I took IELTS, I didn't took the TOEFL, but uh, yes, both of them are um, valid. And for IELTS, you need a relatively higher score I think everything should be above seven points, uh, seven mm. bands. So now coming to the next part, since you are in the Canada for a longer time, you might know what are the real criteria that govern your selection? Like, is it the marks which matter? Or is it that like research experience that matter? Or if you have any kind of publication, what is the actually the, the things which really matters? Uh, that I wouldn't be able to answer because that really don't say what matters. But I can tell from my experience that um, I was very nervous when I started the application because I had no um, experience, um, little, very little experience in research because I did a research project just for six months. And that six months of research project did not result in any publication. So mm -hmm. I was very nervous that I might won't, I, I won't get the, uh, into any PhD program, but I did. So mm -hmm. I kind of think that uh, the marks that I had in my bachelor's or my master's, uh, they, uh, that was significant uh, weight was given to those uh, marks as well. Uh, okay. Because that was the one thing that was really popping out in my CV that I have a relatively very good score. Mm -hmm. And the other than that, so um, you, your statement of purpose, uh, that matters. How you write your reference letters matter. So how the uh, reference letters that your supervisors uh, have written, uh, that would carry a weight. So once that uh, in, uh, in uh, application uh, that they have read and they like the application, they would ask you for an interview. That's mm -hmm. really not an interview, but they would ask you about, they would really tell you about how the program works and uh, if, if you have any questions. So I uh, noticed in that interviews that if I show a passion that, oh, I am very, very interested in doing this work, or if you just show a passion for that, they would be really interested in taking you because they do realize that a master's, because mine is a course-based master's, so maybe the student doesn't have the, uh, did not uh, have their experience in research, but this person is uh, has the potential and is passionate about the research. So it basically, it's like how much you are curious to do research and what is your potential to execute yes. the things. Yes, yes. Okay, now coming to the next point is about fellowship and tuition fees. How much fellowship do you get and what is the tuition fees? Um, tuition fees is uh, around $15,000. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, tuition, uh, the fellowship that you will get is around... Thirty to forty thousand mm -hmm. uh, dollars, and so that fellowship would cover your tuition fees and then your living expenses. Um, the one thing that I would really say is that for international, uh, for uh, domestic students, there are a lot of other fellowships that you can apply when you're here in Canada, but mm -hmm. international students really do not have that many opportunities for extra fellowships. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some, but they're very competitive. But mm -hmm. if, you, if you can get those, then your fellowships is like around $50,000. Okay. So basically, whatever you are getting is enough to complete your subsistence as well as your educational, you know, expenditure. So you can cover everything. You might not yes. take anything, but you will, you know, complete your everything from this yes. amount. Yes, exactly. Okay. So coming to the next question is, what is the average duration of completion for PhDs there? How long? So the PhD would take four years. So Thanks. most of the people would cover in four years. Um, mm -hmm. If you're not able to finish in four years, they might give you an extension for another six months, but then mm -hmm. you really have to finish it in um, the 
let's say if they're giving you the extension in the six months then. But the average is four years. Everyone finishes it in four years. Okay, okay. That's that's a good amount of time. Moving to the next question is, what is the lifestyle work-life balance in Canada? Oh, yeah. So about the uh, so you get the weekends off. So you have just have to work five days of the week when you're required to be there. On the weekends, you, you're not required to be um, in... <clears throat> school to do any work um, even the professors do not recommend you going to the school they, they ask you to take the vacation um, um, so that you can rejuvenate yourself and then get back to work you you are you're just basically more independent uh, you can do your own stuff you can manage everything on your own and get uh, get good quality things for as far as the Canadians are very very warm people they're very nice uh, they have so you, even on your first day, they will make you, they'll try to integrate you with, uh, with them. Uh, that's the one thing about Canadians. They're very polite. They're very nice. They're very friendly. Um, uh, yeah. So that, that was the one thing. Okay. The next question is about racism and discrimination. I haven't um, felt any racism or discrimination. Um, but then again, I wouldn't say that there, there isn't. There could be. Uh, I I would not say that there is not race, any racism in Canada. That's a huge thing that I would say because there are some people fighting for it. I personally haven't felt it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that could also be because uh, I'm living in a, a, uh, um, a city where there is this huge university and there are so many people from different cultures, different countries. And so people here have uh, learned how to uh, deal with, uh, with that, in that, with that situation. Mm -hmm. So not here in bigger cities. You, if you might go to smaller cities, there could be, but mm -hmm. I haven't. Okay. So here comes the most important and the most amazing question that you might also speculate, but I'm going to ans uh, you know, ask is what is the process of getting PR after PhD? So uh, for the process for the PhD, PR after PhD is that you really have to count your points. So there is a point-based system uh, with which you apply for the PR. And mm -hmm. the PhD will definitely uh, put some extra points into your PR. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you, once you have enough points, then you can just uh, make up an application there, uh, there on the website. So you just uh, um, uh, make an application for yourself. If you have enough points above the cutoff, they'll send you an invitation, and then you will just have to uh, submit the documents. It's not a, it, it can take about like nine to 10 months, but you will get PR. There, there's another way, it's called a provincial nominee program. So that okay. is the province nominates you for the PR. You have to uh, uh, apply for that. And mm -hmm. then you get extra around 600 points, uh, the last I heard. And then those 600 points, can uh, you can put that into the Expressway program and mm -hmm. apply for the PR. So the, really, it is the same process. It's just that the PhD adds extra points. Uh, no, no, it's, it, it's about if you do your PhD from Canada, then what are the chances of getting a PR? Because you have your done education from Canada, I think. And that's yes. extra points. Yes, yes. That's the, you will, there are high chances of, a person getting a PR if they have done their PhD because that's the educational qualification from Canada and mm -hmm. besides that's a very high uh, um, qualification that adds points and then you have a uh, educational background from Canada no, that no. also adds the weight to the points so it's all a matter of points uh, how you apply so all people should do their PhD from Canada if they want to get a PR in Canada I think so coming to the next and the last point, if you do you have any suggestions, comments for the future candidates who are willing to apply to Canada? So what should they keep in their mind or how should they prepare? Something like that. Advice. Uh, I like to say two things. One, that uh, be prepared, like do your research well, look at all of the uh, websites and uh, look at what kind of research the faculty is doing and so and what kind of application, uh, what, what are the things that you might need for the application process. And, and secondly, uh, is that persistence is the key. 
uh, just keep moving, have faith in yourself. And even if you get rejected from uh, one school, doesn't matter, keep going. Uh, some other would accept. I personally applied at five. Uh, I got into just two, but, uh, but then persistence is the key. Just keep moving. You will eventually get there. Okay. And to be in the land of opportunities called Canada, you have to have some faith in yourself and apply as she has recommended. Like all the documents should be prepared in advance so that you don't you know, mess up in, the, in between the process. And thank you very much for this. I'm, you know, I'm too much you know, thankful to you for sparing time for this activity and coming forward to spare your time for this you know, informative video. And thank you very much, Amit. And I hope to meet you soon. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So guys, I hope you would like this video, find it informative because Amik has told about a lot of things that would be required for you. And I think this was quite informative and you would have learned a lot. So if you think this was a good video, press the like button and hit the subscribe button and also press the bell icon so that you don't miss any further updates or any further videos from our channel. So stay connected, stay tuned and let's meet in the next video. Thank you very much.